Imagine if you lost 20, 30, 40, or even 50 pounds or more right away. Would you be more attractive to the opposite sex? Feel better? Sleep better? If you've tried to lose weight in the past and repeatedly failed, then you need to know about a true game changer medication. Semaglutide is FDA approved. It can produce quick and easy results. Call the number on your screen now for free info. This is the last diet you'll ever go on. Finally lose the weight and keep it off. There's no pain, no surgery, no exercise plan, no starvation, no fasting, no silly meal prep. In fact, you can continue to eat the foods you love. Pause this screen and take down this number or store it in your cell phone. But call today for free information. The Advanced Medical Weight Loss Program is physician-based and works with your body naturally to create the feeling of being full. This is not just about losing weight. This is about what your life can become as a thinner you. Call the number on your screen now for free info. Finally, lose the weight and keep it off. Look great this summer, but hurry. There's a huge demand for this product and shortages may occur at any time. Call the number on your screen now for free information. Welcome to the Turnpike Sports Spotlight. Dave Weishaddle with you. It's great to talk to our next guest because I think he is the person that has appeared on this show the most over the years. And what's even more exciting is he has something brand new to talk about. Anyone in the gaming industry knows Adam Small, and he has two incredible new sites called Casino Reports and Lottery Geeks. And we're going to find out all about him because Adam is on the line with us right now. Adam, welcome back to the show. It's great to be back, and I didn't realize I was your your uh, most frequent or most visited guest. But yeah, that's pretty I think, cool. That's I a think great you're, distinction. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think you and Sean Flaherty has been on as a show a lot, so uh, I think he's coming up. But you're 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 way ahead of the pack. That's awesome, yeah. and and uh, it's great that Sean's been on a bunch too. Oh, uh, yeah. I, Really admire him a lot as well. Yeah, he, I think he, I'll talk to him next week. So uh, he's he's <laughs> he's improving on his uh, record there for this show. So, uh, but I want to tell you, and you know that. Uh, sorry, your 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 two uh, most frequent guests are both West Virginia natives. So I know, probably I know. unusual. <laughs> it's, it's just so <laughs> weird. I don't know. But uh, but like I said, first off, congratulations on this new enterprise, Casino Reports and Lottery Geeks. I mean, they're just incredible sites, and uh, they fall under your new company called Third Planet Affiliates. Now, who's involved with Third Planet? I'm sure anyone who's in the gaming industry will know some of the names that you're working with. But uh, how did you guys form, and what was your goal for Third Planet Affiliates? So... Uh... I've been working with a guy named Cal Spears for about 20 years now. We actually uh, were college classmates at Vanderbilt, and we lived together in, uh, I guess we started living together around 2004 with one other roommate who, um, funny enough, is our lawyer now. <laughs> um, and uh, we we started a website called Pocket Fives, uh, which I'm sure a lot of a lot of your re- uh, listeners, especially because you've got a poker audience a lot of the time, sure. are familiar with. Uh we were living together. We were playing a ton of poker, both uh, in person, just with our friends, and or going to Tunica and playing the casinos there. Or uh, we started playing online a lot because that was when online poker was really starting to blow up in uh, 2004. And Chris Moneymaker just won the World Series of Poker, and so on. And uh, we were we were playing a lot on the now defunct and sort of infamous website Ultimate Bet at the time, and they had a, a feature that was really cool called Ultimate Buddy uh, that uh, that uh, uh, lets you sort of track other players online, and you, you could see you could like kind of put all your favorite players in there, and it, it looked like instant messenger or something like that. But when they popped up, you could click on it and click through and see their tables and chat with them and stuff like that. So we uh, we had this idea to sort of start featuring these these well known players that everyone was following around more, and and that turned into Pocket Fives. So uh, I bring this up just to say that uh, Cal and I've been working together a long time. We had another partner at the time, uh, Riley Bryant, uh, who also partnered with us on our last business, and is currently the CTO of Better Collective US. Um, so. We, uh, Cal, Cal and I have both exited, uh, our last business, which, uh, included Rotor Grinders and Sports Handle, US Bets, a number of other sites. We sold the Better Collective in 2019. 
uh, wrapped up our earn out at the end of 2021 and uh, and I worked for a bit for Better Collective. But I left last year and the two of us uh, are back together just working on our next project. It, uh, it, it's kind of in some ways similar to what we were doing at Sports Handle, but focused on the casino and lottery spaces as opposed to sports betting. And uh, majorly different would be that it's quite a bit less bootstrapped. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a lot more of our own money to put into it and also, um, you know, potentially uh, investment dollars that may come in in the future. And uh, because of that, we're able to kind of ramp it up a lot faster than we did with our last businesses and to be more competitive in what is a much more challenging pool to swim in now than yeah. it was five or six years ago. Um, and so that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, our first, our, our first new hire slash partner that we brought in was Brett Smiley, mm -hmm. who was a co-founder of Sports Handle. We worked with for years, another New Jersey guy up there. <laughs> um, Brett, uh, Brett worked with us for a number of years. He's an amazing, amazing, uh, content leader. Um, and he doesn't only just produce incredible content and and he's an incredible manager of people but he also has really great business ideas around that content he's capable of, of getting it in front of more people of building relationships with other media organizations and people uh he's he's just an incredible all-around guy to work with um and then right after uh well not right after soon after we hired brett we brought in eric raskin who sure. uh, wrote the book the money maker effect back in the day worked for us for us bets for a number of years and um is also just a, a very uh experienced weathered editor um who was able to really take our content to the next level so um it's the four of us along with one other partner right now um who I think your, your listeners would be less familiar with and he kind of prefers to stay in the background, but uh, yeah, really it's a five man operation. Uh, we're looking into a lot of opportunities in the space, not just, uh, not just online casino and lottery. Uh, we've been kind of, um, Cal likes to call it hanging around the rim, uh, <laughs> looking for sports betting oppor opportunities uh, that might fall into our lap or that, you know, might be the kind of things that we can take on that might be harder for the big public companies to take on. And um you know, we're, we're just keeping ourselves in the mix and, and hoping to find something in the sports space. Cause I, I think we do want to be in sports, mm -hmm. but what we don't want to do is, is start a new site from scratch. I think that would just be just too hard right now and take too long given the current environment. And we've just seen all kinds of other organizations fall on their face. I, I mean, there was a site called the messenger that launched last year that spent $50 million in a year and then shut down. <laughs> Uh, so I, we don't want to go do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I just, I think, you know, if someone wanted to build the action network today um, or something like that, it would just be a very, very massive investment. And you still might not catch up to the, the people that are out there. I love the topics you guys hit. I mean, why do you feel that there was a need for the site that you just launched? I mean, did you feel that there was a segment of the gaming industry that was not being covered adequately? Or did you find that casino reports and lottery geeks would address issues that not a lot of people in this industry are covering? Because like I said, I mean, I, I love the topics you're hitting. Thanks. Um, so... For casino reports specifically, there are a lot of other casino news sites out there. Sure. Um, there are, you know, sites like Play USA that have been around for a long time and, and are effectively affiliate sites uh, that run news content as well. I think that we're trying to differentiate on the quality and depth of content compared to some of these other sites. Mm -hmm. And that, that's not to say anything about that site or any other specifically. <laughs> Uh, I think, you know, they're doing good work, but um, we're trying to take it a bit deeper. And an example of that is the VIP article that we were talking about prior to sure. this, uh, to the interview, uh, where we just published an article. Today's June 7th that we're recording. It was, it was probably June 5th that we published it two or three days ago. And uh, it was a very deep dive that took months to put together about uh, the whole system of VIP treatment in sports betting and online casinos 
And uh, this is an issue that's been coming to light this year. It's a very interesting topic. Um, there's a lawsuit going on that I'm sure lots of people know about between DraftKings and Fanatics yeah. uh, over an executive that was poached who seemingly was brought over to primarily bring one single customer from DraftKings to Fanatics who um, has shifted Fanatics market share in New Jersey from like low single digits to in the 20s in the 20 20% <laughs> over 20% in a major state like New Jersey mm -hmm. it's quite eye opening that one single customer could be 20% of the total market i mean that that just is not something that i would have believed yeah. before i heard about this um and i think it is probably a topic a lot of people in the industry are very uncomfortable talking about or seeing media writing about but the um the toothpaste is kind of out of the tube mm -hmm. at this point and we're committed to covering this from all angles and getting information in front of people that they want to understand better and we're not going to do it in some kind of TMZ way where we're out there, you know, trying to say the most bombastic stuff possible and, and get eyeballs and have everyone gawk. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get accurate, uh, well understood information uh, into readable format for, for our visitors. And, uh, and I don't think anyone else is really doing that no. for either casino or lottery. Uh, there's some decent sites covering these topics, but I don't think anyone is covering it at the depth that we're at least trying to. Well, let me ask you more about casino reports. Uh, I'm a gaming attorney in New Jersey, and I'm about five minutes away from the Pennsylvania border. So I'm in that online casino sweet spot in the country. And and when I'm reading casino reports, I, I like I, like you said, I find that you're covering things that I need to know about if you're involved in the gaming business. When it comes to casino reports, what are the other stories that people will find there? Because it, it's very unique, and what you report on is so incredibly important to the gaming industry on that site. It's a wide variety, mm -hmm. really. So, uh, of course, we're going to cover news like uh, if a new state is is considering or has legalized online casinos and those kinds of topics uh, or, you know, what's going on inside regulatory bodies. That's the kind of stuff that that's our bread and butter and that we're going to make sure we have high quality coverage of. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to get into some more kind of niche topics around the space. Um, and some of them aren't directly about what's going on with casinos, but more kind of industry inside baseball kind of stuff that we think will be interesting to people who are, you know, tangential to adjacent to the industry uh, or even outside the industry. Uh, one such example was uh, last week, I believe we published a piece about the recent Google algorithm changes and yeah. how they're affecting yeah. major sports media and affiliate companies. Um, I think this is fascinating. I think it's, uh, it's something that we've seen a lot of Twitter and LinkedIn buzz about, but hadn't really seen anyone break down at least uh, with respect to the gaming industry. And so we tried to go as deep as we could on the matter. Uh, we got some interviews with people who had been inside some of these big affiliates that have, um, partnered with major media organizations to put sports betting content up and, and just try to understand what the deals are between those organizations, um, who is taking the most risk, who's getting hurt the most by these algorithmic changes. And just in case I, I didn't explain it, I guess, but <laughs> basically you got these big affiliate companies that have, have partnered with companies like, um, you know, uh, NJ, what is it? NJ Advanced Media, yeah, the, the yeah. company that owns NJ.com or um, New York Post, my former employer, Better Collective, uh, is partnered with them. There are a whole bunch of these deals. And so mm -hmm. you'll see things, you'll see websites that are, you know, major legacy newspapers coming up high in search for major search terms around our business. And that's because companies like Better Collective and Container Media and XL Media and, and quite a number of others uh, are partnering with these media organizations. And what Google is coming out and saying is this is what they're calling reputation abuse. Others call it parasite SEO, mm -hmm. um, where you are uh, effectively trying to get your content up on someone else's site to take advantage of that site's higher authority and reputation in search and and use that to rank high with affiliate content that you can monetize with, with um, sports betting and casino affiliate deals. And Google is saying they don't want this. They want sites to put up their own content, not to be uh, letting other people effectively monetize their sites this way. 
And, um, and, and so we broke it down. Uh, it was quite a long and complicated piece, but I think the people that read it found it very interesting and, and learned something from it. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things I learned from it was that there are companies uh, like Katana Media and XL Media that uh, have an overall market cap, they're public companies uh, south of $50 million that were at times committing $10 million a year or yeah. more to a single media partner per year in these deals. And if they lose all their revenue because Google de-indexes these entire sections, they're still on the hook for $10 million a year or whatever. And I mean, if they're worth $50 million or less, they probably don't have 10 million sitting in the bank that they can just, you know, ship to another company. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, putting them in quite a precarious situation. I love that article. It was a great article written by Steve Ruddick on CasinoReports.com, so everyone should check that out. It's just fascinating to see how that business works. Sticking with that, what do you see as the next step for the gambling affiliates? I mean, a lot of these affiliate marketers have made the media deals, like you said. They have employees to worry about. They have stockholders that could be affected. What do you see as the next step for the affiliate marketers? Do they find other areas for promotion? Do some even consider litigation? I mean, where do you see this headed in the near future? Well, there could be litigation between media partners and affiliates just because affiliates might yeah. not like literally be able to pay yeah. some of these debts. There could be bankruptcies even. Um, it hasn't come to that yet, but I, I certainly think it's possible. Um, but I think, um, you know, bigger picture answer to what you're saying is that I kind of have a hard and fast rule as an affiliate, as someone experienced in this space, I want to create things of value whether it is a community, whether it's uh, a news website, whether it's tools, uh, everything that we create should be something that people actually want to consume. And at the end of the day, all these shortcuts to make money using someone else's high authority site or, or whatever are, are shortcuts, but they're temporary. Uh, these are fleeting opportunities to make money. And that doesn't mean that they weren't worth pursuing, but um, they're not they're not the long-term solution to having a successful business. And what we're always trying to do is build things that are unique and valuable and that people will want to consume. And, uh, and I think that when you see really smart affiliates out there and, and Better Collective is certainly, um, you know, the most successful in this space. Obviously, I say again, you know, I'm uh, at least somewhat associated. I used to work there and sold sure. my company to them, uh, but I admire them a lot uh, and admire what they've done from an M&A perspective, particularly that they they don't just buy up, you know, sites that are ranking well in Google. They they bought up products that are of interest that have reach that you know reach into different buckets that they're not already targeting um i I thought one that they got last year playmaker hq was really really interesting because it's got a bunch of of sports related content that um you know times are doing podcasts with like shaquille o'neal and people like that um just reaching an audience that that uh you know you can't reach just by ranking well in google and um, an action network has always been really good at that of just creating really good tools of uh, creating content that's unique of partnering with with influencers, um, people with a lot of traffic and ability to, to push traffic. So um, I think like, you know, if I'm an affiliate, I want to be finding more ways to do that. Mm-hmm. I want to be finding ways to create things that haven't already been created to get into lanes that no one is is really successfully driving in right now and not just be focused on trying to rank for a few keywords and creating some site that's targeting 10 keywords. I I think those days are over. Well, let me ask you something. Does something like this, this change in Google's um, procedures, do they affect the bigger affiliate marketers or or is this ripple all throughout the, uh, the market? Does it affect big and small affiliate marketers the same way? Well, it affects it affects everyone that is engaging in reputation abuse, mm-hmm. um, and that's mostly bigger affiliate companies. Just because, at least, to work with really high authority, high value sites um, like NJ.com or New York Post, you have to be able to pay them uh, millions of dollars to get access to those kinds of deals. And so, you know, that's not happening with some mom and pop type affiliate. Um, 
for the most part, with this particular update, the companies that are getting hurt the most are publicly traded affiliates. Uh, and there are multitude of reasons for this, but I think the the biggest, the easiest to explain is that shareholders are looking for growth all the time. <laughs> and these big public affiliates, in order to grow, need to keep growing the number of players that they're sending. And there are basically two ways to do that. One is through M&A and the other is through, uh, you know, partnering with existing other companies to kind of together send more players. And, uh, and, and these big publicly traded affiliates are doing both. They're doing M&A when they can. Some of them have more cash and, and access to cash to do that than others. Um, but they've all engaged in it at times. And, uh, and then they've also all started doing, you know, what Google calls reputation abuse, working with established, uh, mainstream websites to publish affiliate content. And, um, and, and this was just like, like I said before, it's kind of a shortcut to getting more players and making more money for a while. And I guess making shareholders happy, uh, or, you know, satisfying that need for every quarter to be bigger than the last quarter. Um, whereas you see some of like other big private affiliates, like, uh, the company that owns casino.org, which is probably, uh, maybe the biggest affiliate company in the world. They yeah. also own covers. Now they own sports book review. Um, they weren't doing any of these kinds of media partnerships because they don't have to, they're privately held. They don't have to, you know, demonstrate that they're sending more players every quarter. Um, they can they can grow at the pace that's comfortable for them and and that makes sense and that is sustainable. Uh, and there are maybe other reasons for that as well that they're not involved in it. But uh, it stood out to me that it's mostly public companies. Well, let, let me ask you about online casinos. I know Casino Reports really handles that market really great, and I, I love reading the articles on it. Do you think online casinos are the next big gambling expansion for this country? I mean, over the years, we've seen how sports betting really took off and exploded across the U.S. Online poker made some small headway, but it doesn't seem like it's catching hold very quickly across the country. Do you feel that online yeah. casinos are the next big issue if a state wants to expand its gaming industry? Yeah, I'm, I mean, just want to riff for a second on poker just while we're sure. while that came up, because I think it's it's relevant to this discussion. So there's there's a real problem with poker. Um, <clears throat> there, there are multiple problems. There's there are issues with cheating and bots and all that kind of stuff. Sure. But um, I think the bigger underlying problem with poker is that when you're pooling players t- together in a peer to peer gaming experience, um it's complicated when it's each state regulating in its own way. And, uh, and, you know, when tax revenue is being attributed based on, you know, where it's generated, but you've got, you got revenue actually being generated at a table with several players playing who, you know, you can sort of argue or how that should be attributed. Um, just combining state poker pools is complicated. And obviously it's been done. There, there are several states, uh, that are pooled together now. So it's not impossible at all, but it is, um, it does make the whole issue trickier. Mm -hmm. And when you couple that on with the fact that poker just hasn't been a huge revenue generator in the U S um, and thereby, you know, legislators can't get as excited about the revenue it'll generate. It just, it just has gone on the back burner since (laughs) PASPA went down. Um, and really it was even on the back burner for a few years before that. Um, Plus, so, uh, let, let me add one more thing. I'm on, on in my 48th hour of still trying to get verified by WSOP because you had to switch over to a new platform. So uh, they're still looking at my paperwork and everyone's paperwork. So I'm going on two, three days yeah. now. So it is complicated. Yeah, it's a it's a pain. All of it. So uh, coming back to online casino, um it is going to expand. It's a matter of time. It might not be that in the next two years that you get more states or a, certainly a bunch more states seems fairly unlikely in the next couple of years. But it is going to expand eventually because it's, for the most part, the same companies that are offering this product as the ones who are offering sports betting. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to be continually lobbying for this and eventually states are going to get into a budget crunch again and and need more ways to add tax revenue and this is a great way to do it and pennsylvania is making tons and tons of money doing this in particular 
Uh, and so it is going to happen eventually. Uh, these are tried and true products. They might not be uh, the most culturally palatable to like everybody, but um, enough people like them. And I think there will be less resistance to it in the future. And so we're, we're not expecting, you know, to be seeing huge expansion in the next year or two, but eventually for sure. And I mean, it, it, it certainly helps that there are still huge offshore casinos there are still huge sweepstakes casinos, this other whole model that, you know, has come out in the last several years, like Chumba Casino and others. And uh, and so you know, the regulated operators are very, very thirsty for the cash that they could be making off this rather than it going to others. And I think the states uh, become thirsty for that as well. And uh, and so this is an area that I, I think you see a lot of investment around the industry. It's yeah. not just us. We're not uniquely positioning ourselves here. Um, you see, you know, DraftKings having bought a uh, golden nugget, for example, there's a lot of buzz around someone or other buying rush street interactive at some point, which is also a pretty casino savvy and casino heavy operator. Um, you see casino tech companies, uh, getting bought up, um, bet MGM is extremely focused in the online casino space. And this is interesting because uh, right now online casinos only in a few States, yeah. they're really only, uh, four open markets. And then you've got, um, so is it, I think Rhode Island, uh, and Connecticut and Delaware, but they're all really like, you know, single, mm-hmm. single provider, uh, States. So um, you really only got four open markets, three major states, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and then West Virginia is a smaller state, my home state. Um, And and so there's a lot of room for expansion. And despite all that, um, online casino is approximately one third of the revenue that's being generated in the U.S. iGaming market. Uh, So, you know, sports betting is legal in like half the U.S. states. uh, And yet it's only doing about two times as much revenue as, as online casino. So um, that that is that is a remarkable fact and shows just how much upside there is in this space. Well, to build on that, I mean, here in New Jersey, I think ninety nine percent of my mobile sports books have online casinos attached to them. I mean, I think there are more online casino television commercials than there are sports betting commercials in this day. I mean, and every Saturday morning, also on television, DraftKings has their online casino report. So that's uh, it's it, it's it's being more promoted more in New Jersey than sports betting is it, it, it looks like and I, I gotta bring up a frequent guest uh, on the show F- sean flority who uh i guess this is a tribute to west virginia show so um who's a, <laughs> who's a delegate from west virginia and is also president of the national council of legislators from gaming states you know west virginia has online casinos jersey has online casinos we always joke i mean what are we doing wrong that no other state wants to make all this money or, you know, it, it, I, Sean always says it's not a blue issue. It's not a red issue. It should be a green issue, which means, you know, the color of cash. Yeah. But do you see, yeah. do you see lawmakers starting to come around and see that, you know, maybe online casinos can really be a help to their economy or their States, or is there some convincing that needs to be done? I think that everyone gets that there's money in it. Um, and I think that, uh, that's, you know, one of several, one of several things that people are thinking about when they're thinking about legalizing this. Um, I think there's a very legitimate concern around social harm. And, um, similarly, there's this concern in sports betting and you're starting to see more and more scandals pop up, which was not surprising, but, um, you know, is concerning for the industry, whether they're problem gambling related or related to athletes betting on their sports or things like that. Um, you are starting to see some negative press over the last year or so around sports betting quite a bit more than before. And I think that doesn't help when you're going out and saying, Hey, we should expand to even more forms of online gambling. Um, but, uh, you know, I think a, a, another big issue is, is just that, the sports teams and leagues were were in the end becoming allies of sports betting expansion and uh, and you know seeing revenue in it for themselves and starting to make the positive points around it that hey you know like it would be better to have this legal than offshore online casino is a bit more um, in the background and something people are less willing to kind of um, you know stand in front of. And so um, it is a little bit harder to get traction, even when there is money in it. Um, And it's 
probably a big component of why this is taking so long. I also think that there there is just this legit risk, as I said before, a social harm that um, hasn't been fully addressed in sports betting yet and is worse for online casino. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just, it's something that I think when we're a little more established in terms of understanding how to mitigate problem gambling in the U.S., particularly as it pertains to online sports betting and online gambling, that we'll be able to kind of heat off some of those some of those concerns that legislators and activists have in a lot of these states. And um, one, one example I always point to um, that has, has interested me for a long time is the state of Illinois um, has had uh, video gaming terminals, VGTs, for a number of years. Are you familiar with that, yeah. Dave? Yep. So, so for people who aren't, if you're ever in a gas station, particularly when you're driving through kind of the country on your way from one place to another, and you'll see kind of in the back corner of some gas station, a, a slot machine yep. or a video poker machine or something like that, um, that's a VGT. And about 10 years ago in Illinois, there was a massive expansion of, of VGTs and the expansion made a a handful of people, um, by the way, mostly out of state people, quite a lot of money, but uh, there wasn't a mitigation of potential social harms built into that whole system or certainly not one that was sufficient to address what can, what can happen with those. Uh, And this is not a, this is not unique to Illinois. This has been going on in the UK forever where they have these little machines you can bet on in, in, inside of like a betting shop, you go into a William Hill to make a bet and then you, you know, end up sitting there playing video poker and losing a bunch of your money. And um, it's not that these machines in themselves are a problem. It's that there are responsible gambling issues. There's KYC type of stuff that needs to happen uh, around gambling and wasn't happening and, and isn't happening sufficiently in a, in a place like Illinois. And when you want to do a big gambling expansion and then it's followed by a bunch of truck drivers losing all the money they made that <laughs> week and, yeah. and that being kind of a central story around it sure. over and over and over again, um, it's hard to come back later and say, let's do another gambling expansion. Um, and it, it's very, you know, it's very disheartening that, you know, short term greed and sort of a lack of foresight and planning can lead to such an issue. But, but you know, that, that is what it is. In Illinois, there's a lot of, you know, pain around that recent memory of this happening. And, uh, and it's not just a memory, it's, it's an ongoing issue, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think just, just to, you know, put a, put a cap on it, like the understanding and planning around the, potential and inevitable social harms that do result from gambling is a necessary part of gambling expansion. And when it happens properly, most of these harms can be heated off. There's always going to be some issues, but as long as they're properly prepared to deal with them, damage can be somewhat reduced. But when it's not addressed ahead of time, it can be pretty disastrous. I want to ask you about another site that you're involved with, and that one's called Lottery Geeks. It's actually a website that covers something that I think has become a very important part of the gaming industry in this country, and that is the lottery. I mean, we even do a show called Beat in the House that has lottery jackpots in it. When it nice. comes when it comes to lottery, what are some of the issues that are reported on for LotteryGeeks.com? This is a newer space for us, right? I mean, I was a lot less familiar with the lottery getting into this. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. it's it's kind of ubiquitous. You grow up, you know, seeing it everywhere. And I remember going to the supermarket as a kid and sure, seeing sure. scratch off tickets and being interested in them <laughs> generally. But um, but it's it's not an area that's deeply understood by a lot of people in our industry. I feel like I've been going to G two E forever or you know SBC type conferences, uh, and yet. Uh, I couldn't remember meeting too many lottery people yeah, basically yeah. ever over the years. Um, and, and it's funny, I, I went to an, a lottery conference recently in Fort Lauderdale. I, I live down in South Florida now and I, I found out this conference was happening and it was like a half hour from my house and like, okay, sure. Why not? I'll go. And I mean, I think the average age of people at this thing was like 75 years <laughs> old. I mean, it's just, um, it's a much stuffier kind of long time government 
people type space, a lot of state directors and people like that. And then you have companies like Jack Pocket that are much sure, sure. younger and more nimble and more similar to kind of a type of people we're used to dealing with. Um, so that, so it's a mix, but it's, I think it, it's more skewed towards those older stuffier public servant ish type people. Um, and so we've been kind of building out our network there and getting to know the space a bit better. And, um, I think it's really interesting. I think it's, it's a project that we weren't sure exactly what we were getting into going in, but, um, that we're pretty excited about now. And, and part of it is, you know, just covering results and, and things like that, that a lot of sites cover, just, you know, having a, a database of, of winning numbers and stuff like that. So people can search those kinds of things. But, um, some of it is covering news around the space. And, uh, one piece of news that we broke recently that, I thought it was pretty interesting and, and fascinating that we were the first people to report on this was that the mega millions was going up in price from $2 per ticket to $5 yeah, per ticket. Yeah. That's not a, you know, that's not a, like a minor price change. That's a, that's a 150% yeah. price increase. Right. And, um, and there's gotta be a story behind that, right? Like why, yeah. why are they going from $2, which, you know, seems fairly in line with them costing, as I recall, a dollar when I was a kid to get a ticket. I mean, $2, 20, 25 years later makes sense, um, to $5, which really makes it almost kind of like a premium product, especially if you're buying, um, you know, you're going buying 10, 20 sure. tickets, yeah. you're spending a decent amount of money on that, um, and just uh, the idea that, you know, there's a bunch of people in, in whatever room in whatever state from, from various states that, that promote the Mega Millions that had made this decision and probably spent some number of years, I assume, going back and forth on it. Very, very interesting to me. And uh, we, we got behind the scenes on that one a little bit and found out more about it. And um, that's the kind of stuff that we're trying to get, uh, similar to Casino Reports, just find these stories that are hard to find that haven't been well covered and uh, getting them out there in a way that that's going to be interesting to people. This whole lottery thing is amazing to me. I mean, I interviewed a guy who wrote a book on the history of the lottery and he documented that lotteries are mentioned in the Bible. So I, I know they've been around for <laughs> a long time, but I got to tell you, over the last couple of years, it seems like the lottery has really blown up in popularity. I, I, I've been I've been doing this show since 2007 and we have never had as many state lotteries advertising with us i'm not complaining but it's, it's mind-blowing to me i mean we constantly get emails from pr companies who are representing lotteries telling us all the new and exciting things that are happening in lottery and, and it's just absolutely right. amazing to me i mean even nevada who's never had a state lottery which blows my mind because yeah. they were worried about interfering with the casino business are considering implementing a state lottery i i guess my question to you is what happened over the last couple of years that made lottery so important to the gaming industry? I mean, is it, is it just because you can buy it online? Is, is that what happened or what's going on with the lottery? I think it's, it's a mix of things, right? I mean, one is definitely technological advance um, because, because everyone in the lottery business is a hundred years old and, and it's been doing it forever. I think it has failed in a lot of ways to advance uh, in the way that the online casino or online sports betting industries have um, because of the sort of insularity of the space uh, and, and inability to consider and let in new ideas. And a lot of that has to do with just being run by governments in general, right? Like, I mean, I remember my sister was working for the government uh, seven, eight years ago and still had a BlackBerry, which I mean, <laughs> probably most people now barely remember a, what yeah. a BlackBerry is, you know? But like, I mean, that was, you know, well into the iPhone and, and Android era and nobody had a BlackBerry anymore except for like everyone who worked for the federal government did. Um, so I think it's just, you know, a testament to how slow governments can move compared to others because of all the various approvals and political considerations and, and so on. And, um, and because of that, it has taken a long time for new technology to make its way into lottery and, and big kind of props to particularly Jack pocket, but also others in that space that have kind of broken through that, figured out interesting ideas for technological advance in the space, and then put those to action despite all the hard work and, you know, the challenges around like legal and regulatory and so on, um, have sort of trudged their way through and become relevant players 
in the space. Um, and it's not just them. There are, there are other companies, game providers, and so on. Um, I'm very interested in a particular company, uh, EQL Games, uh, run by a guy named Brad Cummings up in uh, Louisville. They've just they've done some fantastic work around game creation as well, and have, have gotten really well connected in the space. And they've been on the grind for like 10 years, maybe more. I, it's not like a simple or easy process to get established in this space, but people have kept at it because they believe in the potential. And I do think you're, you're correct that in the last couple of years, there's been a bit of a watershed where finally some of these companies have really broken through, started to get some big contracts, started to, um, you know, make big splashes. I think the most notable thing that everyone has seen was DraftKings buying Jack Pocket for $750 sure. million, dollars, which is a, an eye-opening sum, right, for a lot of people. Incredible. Um, but, uh, you know, there's going to be more of this. There are going to be more of these companies that are, whether they're game creators for instant lotteries, like, if you're in Pennsylvania, you know, you can play these games online. They're effectively casino games on the lottery website. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they certainly seem like it when you're playing, you know, you just, you hit a button and then you're playing a game for a minute and then you've lost your money or won occasionally. And, uh, <laughs> and then you hit the button again and play. I mean, it's like playing a slot of, of sorts. Right. And, uh, and so the people that are able to create better and better games that are more effective at, you know, user engagement and so on. Whoever creates the, the the divine fortune of online lottery is going to do mm -hmm. very well, and so I mean that's the space I expect to grow. Just the, these types of companies that are game creators, like the IGT type companies, but the more boutique, smaller ones, uh, they're going to be more and more of those in the lottery space as as i lotteries continue to open up. And uh, yeah, it's it's great. I mean it's 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 good to have more competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, lotteries obviously are really. Uh, big revenue generators for the states themselves. Um, there's more transparency around, you know, where the money is coming from and where it's going. And and I think it's I think it's generally probably a good development for our space, even though it does create some awkwardness as there is like some overlap, particularly in a state like Pennsylvania, where you have I lottery in Michigan as well. Mm -hmm. You have these like robust I lotteries and you have an online casino market and the games are kind of the same thing. <laughs> So I, I do think they're going to have to sort that out at some point. I have one personal lottery story that, uh, you know, we have a online lottery where you can buy tickets. And I won't say it because, you know, I, I this is my one complaint about them. It, I bought a ticket, so I, I wanted to try it. I bought a ticket for that big Powerball. I think it was $1.3 billion. You know, I wake up the next morning and I get an email. You won the Powerball. I won four. <laughs> I won four dollars. I matched the Powerball. So, <laughs> yeah, so nice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but that that was my one complaint. Everything else is great with uh, with them. But, but I got to ask you, what, what yeah. are what are some of the big stories we should be looking out for in the gambling industry, especially when it comes to online casinos or casinos and the lottery? I mean, you think more states will allow online casinos? Certainly not in two thousand twenty four, but possibly in two thousand twenty five. I mean. Do you think Nevada and Alabama will jump on the lottery bandwagon and legalize the state lottery? I mean, what 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 should we be looking forward to in the near future? And what kind of stories do you think you'll be covering in the coming months? Well, I, I've learned that I'm a notoriously bad predictor of, of these sorts of things. So I um, try not to go out and say, I think, you know, the, this many states or these states will uh, legalize because, uh, you know, th those predictions are a dime a dozen and I, I don't think I'd be willing to bet my own money on them. Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I'd rather not make them. But I will say just generally speaking that I think for online casino, it's going to be more of a trickle uh, than a, uh, you know, a flow, I guess. And uh, it, it may not, like you said, probably not going to happen at all this year, um, may not happen at all next year either, although it certainly could. Um, it's just very hard to predict, but I don't think it's going to be like sports betting where all of a sudden 20 states do it in two years or whatever. I just think it's going to take longer for this, uh, this to be accepted and to make its way through these uh, state legislatures. It's not going to be a rush to be ahead of everybody else or whatever. And it's probably going to be really tough on the tax rates and fees the way Pennsylvania is, you know, notoriously uh, 54% 
slot tax and uh, pretty high tax rates on other online gambling as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you're going to see more of that as uh, they don't have to, these, these states don't have to like curry favor with the operators to make this market happen. They 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 know that the operators are dying for this and they're going to milk every dollar out of it they can. So I think you're going to see more states like Pennsylvania come in with with heavy tax rates. And, uh, and as far as stories that we're going to be covering, uh, look, we're looking for everything interesting happening around the industry, not just uh, ha- happening around the industry, not just um, online casino related, but anything. You know, we did the story about the Google updates. We did the story about VIP programs, which is largely focused on sports, but also casino. We're just looking for interesting industry stories. And we're going to keep our eyes out there for that. We've got really good sources, excellent journalists. We're going to be expanding our team and uh, and producing even more. And uh, I, I think it's I think it's going to be really interesting to follow these two sites. And that's the reason I'm I'm in it because uh, I think we're doing something that's going to be of interest to a lot of people. Adam, we're running out of time, but can you give out the websites for Casino Reports and Lottery Geek so people can check them out because they are both outstanding sites with a ton of information. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Thanks for allowing me to plug. Uh, It's CasinoReports.com and LotteryGeeks.com with an S at the end, both, both with an S at the end. Uh, we're actually going to be, uh, putting up the new version of both sites here in the next couple months sometime. So, um, they're, they're already nice looking sites, but they'll be much improved when the next versions come out. And, uh, we're working on some excellent new features for both outside of the, uh, the kind of news content. So, uh, keep your eyes out, check out what we're doing. And, and I think if you're interested in the industry, you'll be interested in what we're doing. Adam Small from CasinoReports.com and LotteryGeeks.com. Thanks so much for coming on and telling us about your great new sites. They are packed with information about the casino and lottery world. I want to congratulate you for launching them because they have stories and reporting you're not going to see anywhere else. Please come back on and keep us updated about what's happening in the casino and lottery world. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, it's great to have you back on. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks so much, Dave. It's awesome. That'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike. 